What's up guys, it's Ollie from History Profiles and today's video will be about Queen Anula of Anuradhapura. She is recorded as the first Sri Lankan queen who wielded power and had complete influence over her kingdom. However, she is also recorded as a woman who was ruled by her passions and her lust, which would lead her to become a cold-blooded killer. Anula was born sometime in the 1st century BC but we know virtually nothing of her upbringing. She was born into a time of instability as the situation in Sri Lanka at the time was one of war, betrayal and strife. Many rulers were being overthrown due to palace plots and coups because of the desire for power which ate away at people's minds. Due to this, the kingdom of Anuradhapura would constantly be in a state of turmoil. Eventually, a man named Karanga would ascend to the throne in 62 BC. His first act was to destroy 18 Buddhist temples that had refused to give him refuge when he was an outlaw. This conveys the savagery of that time period and the mentality at the time. Karanga the king would marry a woman named Anula. Karanga is recorded to have reigned for 12 years until one day Anula, his queen consort and wife, murdered him. She did this by poisoning his food and then served it to him. You see, Anula had become infatuated by a palace guard. It is unknown whether they were having an affair or not, but Anula was willing to kill royalty for the opportunity to be with this palace guard, named Kuratisa, so their relationship must have flowered into something that was worth killing for. Now that the king was dead, Anula would take over more responsibilities in the kingdom and would remain queen. She now knew how to play the game of chess that all opportunist rulers would play in order to obtain and retain power. She would marry Kudatisa and he would become the king. However, under Anula's rule, he wouldn't live long. Kudatisa would reign for only a year and two months until he was murdered by poison by Anula's own hand. At this point, Anula had now complete dominance over the government, gaining even more influence during the reign of Kudatisa. After his death, she now had complete control over the kingdom and was even ruling it in her own name. Anula would soon find a new lover named Vatuka. Vatuka was a carpenter, but he somehow managed to earn the affection of the queen. The pair would quickly marry and he would become king, but only in name. Anula was calling the shots, and just a year after they were married, he was poisoned by the queen. Anula would then fall in love with a wood carrier named Darubathika Tisa, and it is said that they would see each other before the death of Vatuka. Therefore, it is speculated that she poisoned Vatuka in order to be with Darubathika, the wood carrier. Again, Darubathika would last on the throne for just over a year before being poisoned by the queen, who was now making a serious habit of killing all of her husbands. She killed Darubathika as she had found a new lover named Nilia, who was the palace priest, and he would become the new king for six months. He was also subsequently killed, and Anula then ruled the kingdom herself for six months. While Anula was ruling, a man named Kutakana Tisa was amassing his strength in the shadows. Kutakana was the son of a man named Mahakuli, who was the cousin of Anula's first husband, Goronaga, who was originally the king and was Anula's path to power. Kutakana had gathered many men in order to take Anula's kingdom. He had originally fled the city of Anuradhapura in fear of his life, as Anula held absolute power and would have killed him as he was a rival to her. However, his men stormed the city and found Anula in her palace. Kutakana then burned her alive and she was consumed by the flames. Kutakana would then become the new king and would have a long reign of 32 years. The information regarding Anula's life is scarce and the majority comes from the Mahavansa, which is a great chronicle on the history of Sri Lanka, written in the style of a poem in the Pali language. It was written by a Buddhist monk at the Mahavihara temple in Anuradhapura 
in around the 3rd century AD, some three to four hundred years after the life of Anula. Therefore, historians are unsure as to whether Anula really lived or not, or if she was a character to portray why women shouldn't rule. However, if Anula truly was a real person, she was the embodiment of someone who let their lusts and passions completely take control over them, to the point of murder. Anula is similar to a woman named Alice Kittler, whose husbands all died, allegedly due to her poisoning them for their wealth and assets, but different in the aspect that she killed simply so she could move on to her new lover, without the repercussions of her husband, who she would murder. Anula would also gain more power and influence with each killing. If you are interested in my video about Alice Kittler, the link will be in the description box below, and it will be displayed on the screen. Let me know what you think in the comment sections down below about Queen Anula. Was she a real person, or do you think the story was exaggerated? Comment down below, and if you like the video, make sure to like, subscribe and share, and I'll see you all next week for another History Profile.